Hey guys, Donna here with Skyhopper. You might remember me from such award-winning films as Skyhopper ground unit installation video or Skyhopper Pro unboxing video and so on. Today we are going to talk about the Skyhopper web GUI for the point-to-point. -point. Um, the web GUI is a web-based application that's going to enable you to configure your units, change your configurations, and also um, check on the status of your configurations. So we'll walk through every single page of the web GUI uh, and give you as much information as possible. Additional information is also, uh, can also be found on our website, www.skyhopper.biz. In the support section, we have a web GUI connection manual. We also have additional information in our user manual, as well as a UART to Ethernet connection guide. All right, we're gonna take a look, thanks. Okay, once you've connected your unit, you're going to want to go to the following IP address, which is the default IP address for connecting your ground unit. The first page that you're going to see when you connect to the web GUI is the general information page. This general information page essentially gives you a snapshot of the current um, status of your unit. The top section gives you basic information such as version, serial number, and so on. The second section um, will show you where you're at in terms of link status, throughput, and unit temperature. Again, nothing needs to be changed here. This is just showing you the status. The third section shows the configuration. It shows what mode you're in, whether in a controller, ground unit, or a remote aerial unit, your frequency, channel bandwidth, and so on. And the final section shows the GPS status. The next page that we move to is the basic configuration page. The first section in the basic configuration page is the unit mode. Currently, we see that the unit is configured as a controller unit. If you want to change the configuration to a remote unit or an aerial unit, just press on the button and once you've gone through the entire page, make sure to apply your changes. We're going to go back to the controller unit since we're working with the ground unit. The second section is frequency. This section is currently disabled, so we'll move down to the unit IP. The unit IP contains the default address. You can change this address as you wish. The next section is encryption. You can enable or disable encryption. You can also choose to include a password for an encryption key. And finally, you can choose the language in which you want to operate. When you're done, make sure to apply all changes. Because we haven't made any changes, we're going to move on to the next page. So this page is the advanced configuration page. The first section indicates the units of measurements in which you're working. You can select either imperial or metric. Interference avoidance is currently disabled. Frequency, please enter a frequency within the given frequency range. For TX power, if you're working in a lab set setting, select a low TX power. If you're working in an outdoor sec setting where your units are far apart, select a high TX power. The next section is the bandwidth section. You can select from either 4.2 or 8.4 megahertz, and accordingly, select the bit rate that you desire. As you'll see, it changes depending on which bandwidth you choose. The next section is your uh, serial connection section. This is if you have any data that you're connecting, um, serial data you're connecting. If you are not connecting any um, data, then you can select disable. You can do a UART to UART connection, or you can select a UART to Ethernet on the remote, or a UART to Ethernet on the controller side. Uh, for an explanation on how to connect the UART to Ethernet, you can refer to the UART to Ethernet connection guide. Select your baud rate, and then finally select the protocol with which you plan to work. Uh, an explanation of all of the protocols can be found in the web GUI manual, um, and it will walk you through each one. Finally, when you've finished, you will move on to pairing, which at this point is disabled. At the end, click apply to save your changes, and you can move on. At the bottom, you'll notice your unit log. 
To save your unit log that you're currently working on, click Save Unit Log and you can save it to your computer. To download an existing unit log, click Download, exist download Unit Log and you will be able to choose from your files um, and download accordingly. The next page we're going to look at is the Link Monitor page. This page shows the RSSI and CINR measurements of channel 0 and channel 1. The top graph shows the RSSI measurement of channel 0 in green and channel 1 in red. If there is a difference between the channels of over 10 dB, and this is a consistent difference, then contact the Skyhopper Pro support team to help you. However, if there is a difference of 5 dB, it shouldn't be an issue at all. This signal indicates the unit's possible distance to fly. If you see below that this distance is under negative 90, then the unit can fly farther. The CINR signal should be between 6 to 12 dB for each channel. Under 6 dB can become problematic for the link. For example, it can create a problem in transmitting video. So this is the throughput screen. The throughput measures uh, your data transmission and reception. The top graph will show your total throughput. And the bottom graph uh, divides it by your downlink and uplink. The downlink uh, bar will be in green and the uplink will be in red. If you are, uh, your throughput is uh, 3.2 megabits per second, then your downlink should show no more than 2.85 megabits per second. The next screen we're gonna take a look at is the scanning screen. It's highly recommended to scan the frequency span every time you turn on your unit. In order to choose the cleanest frequency, you want to choose one with the lowest RSSI reading. Now, a quick note, it's very important that prior to beginning the scan, you turn off the unit that you are not scanning. If that unit should remain on, its signal can serve as, as an interference. To get started, you want to, you want to select your beginning frequency and your end frequency and then choose your frequency step. The shorter the frequency step, the longer the scan. In this case, we've selected 5 MHz. Once you've selected the parameters, you can start the scan, and then you'll see the estimated time that it will take to scan, and the progress. When you take a look below, you'll see your scan results. In this case, we've already run a scan, so we can see the results here. You'll see results for channel 0 and channel 1, as mentioned, you want to choose the frequency with the lowest RSSI reading. So in this case, you can choose a frequency such as 2.4 or, alternatively, 2.5 MHz. The final screen is for firmware updates. If you go to your general information screen, check what revision you currently have. If your revision is an A, E, or H, you will want to download an EU file. If your revision is B or D, you'll download a DU file. Any available downloads will be found on our webpage, www.skyhopper.biz, in the download section of the support section. And there you can download the update, save it to your computer, and then browse the file and apply it.